Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. In this video, we will be using a machine learning algorithm called Decision Tree to identify potential diabetes patients. If you don't know what is a decision tree, I will leave some material in the description of this video. But basically, as the name indicates, it reflects the structure of a tree that is upside down, where the root represents the entire data set, which will be flown and split it through the entire elements of the tree in the form of a series of yes or no questions until we get to the leaf, which is the final decision or the final class. In this project, for example, the algorithm will be asking questions about the patient like gender, age, smoking history, body mass index, and so on. Until we get to the final class or the final decision, how probably this patient to be diabetic or non-diabetic. So let's go ahead and do this in Python. This is our data set. Uh, we have the gender, we have the age, we have the hypertension. If the person is having hypertension, it's gonna be one. If not, it's zero. Similarly, heart disease. If, it, if the person is having a heart disease, it's gonna be one. If not, it's zero. Smoking history, never a smoker, no information, current smoker or a former smoker. We have the body mass index. This is basically the height of the person compared to the, to the weight of the person. We have the blood glucose level. This is a test taking a specific moment. It doesn't really reflect uh, that the patient is diabetic or not. Uh, you can see here this person is having a blood glucose level of 200, but is not diabetic. And last column is uh, the medical status of the, of the patient. If a diabetic is gonna be one, if not is zero. The data set is for 100,000 patients. And we are going to use 70% of this, of this data set to train our model and 30% of it to test our model and to see how the model is performing. So let's go ahead and do this in Python. So first we need to import some libraries that we will need. So we need pandas to work with data frames. From SQLM3, we need the decision tree classifier. So this is going to be our machine learning algorithm that we will use to do the classification. And then we need also from SQLM model selection, we need the training test split. This is to split our data into a testing data set and training data set. We need also uh, from SQL metrics the accuracy score to evaluate our model. So this is okay. Now let's load our data into a pandas data frame. We have already explained this in Excel. So this is our data for 100,000 patients, which is quite big data. So first thing we need to do when uh, working with, with big data is to check for missing values. So let's do that. Data dot is null dot sum will give me the, the missing values in each column if there is missing values. So I run this, I can see that no missing values in, in any of the columns. Now let's take a look at the data type in each, in each column. So data.d types will give me the data type in each column. And as we can see, uh, we have two columns that are having the object data type. The rest of the columns are numeric. And as we know, uh, machine learning algorithms work with only numeric data. So we need to convert these two columns into a numeric data be before we move on and start training our model. So let's go ahead and do that. So these two lines of code will convert the gender and smoking history columns into a new columns with the same name. So basically will be replaced by two new columns with the same names, but with the numeric data type using the .cat.codes. And then we will copy all the, the input data, the features into X, into a new data frame named X. And the output column will be uh, copied into a new data frame named Y. So X is gonna be our input for all features, except the diabetes column, which is our target or output, which is going to be copied into the Y data frame. So if we take a look at X, we're expecting to see all, well, we have to run this. And then if we take a look at X, we, we can see that it includes all the input features without the output column. And you can see that the smoking history and the gender columns have been converted into, new, uh, into numeric data. And similarly, if we take a look at Y, it is the target column, which is the diabetes. Now let's split our data into a training data set and testing data set. So 30% is going to be for testing and 70% for training. And the random step is basically to make sure that every time I run the code, I get the same random split. Otherwise, every time you run the code, you will get a different split and then the, the result will be slightly different. So let's run this. And now let's build our model or initialize the decision tree. So decision tree classifier, there is a lot of parameters that you can play with here. I will leave um, the link for the documentation in the description of this video. Uh, here we are keeping everything as, as default, uh, except the random state as well. 
Again, this is also uh, when the model is initiating the split uh, through the trees. Uh, we make sure that every time we run the code, we get the same random split. And then we, we pass the training data, the 70%, together with, with their target, their output, to train the model. And then we ask the model to predict for the test data set, 30%. And then we will um, copy them to the X test to have a look at the predictions. So we can see here, the model has already predicted for the test data sets, the 30,000 patients. So this is the predictions and these are the actuals. So you can see here, some, some of them are matching, some of them are not. So we need to take a look at the accuracy of the model to understand uh, the performance of the model. So here we evaluate um, the accuracy using the accuracy score from SKLM. We pass the Y test, which is the actual, and the Y predict, which is the predictions, and we ask the accuracy score to compare them. And we can see that uh, the accuracy is 92%. We can also take a look at the features importance during the training process. So from the model feature importances, uh, we pass the X train, the, the data frame for the training features um, to understand which features were the most important during the training process. So if we run this, we can see here that the blood glucose level was the most important one. Then the body mass index, the age, smoking history, gender, hypertension, and lastly, the heart disease. Last thing we want to do is to take a look at the confusion matrix and to further understand the performance of the model on each class. So from SQLR matrix, we, we import the confusion matrix, and then we pass the actuals versus the predictions, and then we print the result. So this is the confusion matrix. Some people told me that it was not clear in the previous videos uh, about the confusion matrix. So I decided to do it in a, in a more fancier and clearer way. I just copy and paste this here and explain it. So we need two, two more libraries to import. So we need Seaborn and Matplot. From Seaborn, we need to create a heat map and we pass our confusion matrix here, CM, which is this one, and set the annotation to true. The formatting is integer. The color is to blues. And then we set the X labels positive, negative, and the Y labels positive, negative. And then we create a Matplot with the title of confusion matrix, the predicted labels on the X, and the true labels on the Y. And let's run this. We get this nice confusion matrix, which is more clearer and is more understandable. We can see that we have the predicted label on the X and the true label in the Y. What does this mean? That means when the actual value was negative, so the patient is not diabetic, the model has predicted this correctly as negative 26,208 and misclassified it as positive 1,245 times that the, the person is diabetic while in fact is not. We can see that the model is doing quite good on this, on this, on this class, uh, the negative class. So 26,202 times correctly classified and only 1,245 times misclassified. On the other side, when the patient is positive, is diabetic, the model has correctly classified it 1,300 times as positive and misclassified it as negative 1,247 times. So 1,247 times, the model is saying the person is not diabetic, while in fact, the patient is diabetic. So why the confusion matrix is, is very important? Because if you remember, the overall accuracy was 92, because the, the accuracy score is calculating how many times the model predicted correctly in total. So in total, the model predicted 26,208 plus 1,300. So that's uh, 27,508. The model predicted correctly out of 30,000, which is the sample of the testing data set. So out of 30,000, 27,000 something, the model is predicting correctly. And that's give us the, the accuracy of 92. But if you look at it from the, from the class perspective, for this class, the negative class, the model is doing quite good in predicting the people who are not diabetic with accuracy of around 99 something. But looking at the other class, the positive class for the people who are diabetic, the model is not doing quite good because it's almost 50-50, 1,300 correctly classified and 1,247 misclassified. So the accuracy at this class is around 
50% or 51%. That's why confusion matrix is important so we can understand more where the, the, the model is performing well and where the model is not performing well and not to just depend on the, the overall accuracy, which is sometimes doesn't reflect um, the, the reality of the performance of the model. And yep, that's it.